Good morning, I'm Michael Lyon, and welcome to Events Calendar. Having our say, the Delaney Sisters' first hundred years runs at the Omaha Community Playhouse now through February 19th. It's the story of Bessie and Sadie Delaney, ages 101 and 103, who invite the audience into their home for an evening of memories in this touching biographical two-person play, starring Real Life Sisters and my guests this morning, Camille matoya Moten and Lynette matoya Moore. Good morning. Thanks so Good much for morning. coming in. Uh, and thanks so much for braving the uh, cold <laughs> temperatures out there. I know. I'm there. five below. What was that? <laughs> I know. Oh, but no wind chill today. I don't care. That's right. Would you like to stay and do the weather? <laughs> when we're right. No problem. <laughs> the play comes from a 1993 New York Times best-selling book. Somebody yeah. discovered these sisters some f- right. 40 years after they uh-huh. retired, and uh, it was going to be a feature article turned into a book right. and then into a play. It's an oral history covering the sisters' trials and tribulations during their lives despite the fact that they had a, a, a very privileged upbringing. A uh, hundred years covers a multitude of events in our nation's history around both race and gender. Mm-hmm. Talk about these women and their story. Well, first of all, I want to say that it, it, this play ends February 9th, not 19th. Just 9th, make thank that you. clear, yeah. Um, well, the story is, like you said, about these uh, del- two sisters, Bess and Sadie Delaney, and they were born into a family where their father had been a slave um, and was uh, part of the, he was freed when he was about seven years old Mm -hmm. um, and uh, had the opportunity to go to college at a time when that was sort of a rare experience for African Americans. It seems almost unthinkable in the 1920s. Exactly. There was an Episcopal priest, a white Episcopal priest, who helped him go to the school, St. Augustine School, which is still in North Raleigh, North Carolina. and there he met um, his future wife, Nanny James Logan. Yes, who was uh, the product of mixed, of heritage. mixed heritage. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and so they had eleven children. Eleven, ten, ch- ten children. Oh, my goodness. He had eleven. He had eleven siblings. <laughs> but right. They had ten children, um, and all of those children. I mean, it's an amazing story. It but is. they all, you know were very educated at a time when it was difficult for black people to even go to school, let alone become attorneys and doctors and That's dentists. Right. And, and they all had higher education and were very, very right. prominent. And it tells people. you some, something about the, uh, the, the spirit and, and the metal of these uh, two women, because Sadie got a master's of education mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Bessie uh, became a dentist, yeah. was the second black woman licensed to practice dentistry right. in yeah. the state of New York. That's uh, it amazing. amazing. Yeah. It, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. And as you listen to the story, um, just the people that they they knew everybody, you know, they knew W.E.B. Du Bois and Booker T. Washington and Cam Calloway and Duke Ellington. I mean, just they were right there during the height of all of that uh, Harlem, Harlem Renaissance. Renaissance. So it's really a very interesting uh, uh, history. And, and to listen to them recount their personal experiences as they go through, they talk about Jim Crow. You know, and and that was the reason, of course, they they moved from North Carolina they, because of uh, Jim Crow laws and segregation. They moved they, to Harlem. They moved to Harlem, and they actually went there because uh, they thought there was more opportunity right. in New York. You know, because the yeah the Jim Crow laws. Well, were they, you know, they were pretty much from the country, right? And yes. they went to New York with their mother in 1915, and they had never seen such things. Yeah, the the people. I mean, some of the lines are. You know that the people were so different, and the, the food was so right. different. And languages, and, right? Yeah. And all over the world. Whereas in North Carolina, all they'd seen were white people, Negroes, and Indians, and that was it. Right. You know? <laughs> so they were just fascinated in, with right, it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So they wanted more. That's what they plenty said. of they oppor- more. plenty of opportunity, but apparently no husbands. Neither of them ever yeah, married. Never married. Yeah. And so, a lot of boyfriends, though. Yeah, they did. Have a lot of, they talk about their bows. They, in right. fact, Bessie says, uh, "Don't think that because Sadie and I are maiden." ladies, we didn't have our share of bows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we and were we... popular, good-looking gals. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the play itself uh, is a conversation between these two women, and uh, it, it has some technical challenges of its own, yeah. because not only is it a, an invitation to uh, sit and, and listen in uh, eavesdrop with, yeah, with these two right, women, yeah. they're also uh, cooking. Correct. Right. At the time, yeah. I mean, there's a working stove on working stage stove and working and sink. sink and, yeah, so By the way, what's great. what's on the menu? Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Chicken, Chicken and gravy, gravy, rice, sweet potatoes and ham, macaroni, macaroni and cheese, <laughs> uh, 
uh, cabbage. She had cauliflower and broccoli, broccoli, turnips and carrots, and for dessert, a birthday cake, a pound cake <laughs> with, with ambrosia. ambrosia. <laughs> it sounds like these are some some of the lines yeah, from the play. Yeah, yeah, of course. Are you kidding? We have no original thoughts this early in the morning. <laughs> As you are uh, portraying these sisters, there are uh, overhead projections, another yes, technical yes. challenge uh, that illuminate various yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, it's almost like a civil rights events. It, you know, we're talking to this imaginary guest in our living room, the dining audience. room, kitchen, which is the audience. And then behind us is this other sort As of... As we speak of people yeah. or things... It's illuminated behind it, right, so it's like right. it comes makes to it life. come to life. Right. You know? What kind of a sense do we get of those events, of those uh, uh, watershed events in in the nation's history and their own personal lives? It's a very real point. sense, I think, because as we as we verbalize it, then and you get the visual behind you, it really, really, truly pulls you into that moment more mm -hmm. than just looking at a picture and more than just telling a story. The two together. I mean, the audience's reaction to many things is really telling. You know, you'll hear the, oh. Right. Oh. Especially when the Jim Crow. Yeah, when we you talk, talk about the about Jim Crow era. Because yes. we tend to forget about that. Right. You know? um, uh, some of the projections are, are people hanging, you know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, a lot of the black face, you know. Yeah. Um, this interview is going to end uh, all too soon. We have just uh, a, a couple of minutes left, but I, I want to just touch upon your, your own lives and sort of parallels. Uh, you're both veteran actors, well-known in Omaha for your talent, but many people may not be aware of your own family's mm -hmm. history, particularly in Omaha during the civil rights uh, movement. Talk about that. Right. Well, our father, our both, our, both of our parents were very active in civil rights in the 60s. Our father was the president of the Nebraska Urban League. So we had the opportunity to meet Malcolm X and Jesse Jackson and Martin Luther King when he was here um, uh, and and to be involved in some of the, you know, protests, the protests mm -hmm. and, and, and at an early age understanding what it was we needed to fight for. You know, when we were children, we couldn't go to Peony Park. We were not allowed in, but because of the, our parents and other people's perseverance, we were able to you know, uh, open up a lot of doors, open occupancy, you know, and all that, all that kind of stuff. So it was, yeah, it was, it was a great upbringing and our parents really taught us to stand up for what was right. right. Um, and so we were very privileged that we had parents like that. Right. And they knew education was very, very important, yeah. which is very true with the Delaney's. I mean, that's one of the right. lines is education, education. And our parents knew that that was the key to success, right. to be educated. And, and they fought for that. I literally hate to have to stop here because I know there's so much more we could talk about, but we are running out of time. My guests today have been Camille Matoya Moten and Lynette Matoya Moore. They are the Delaney sisters on stage at the Omaha Community Playhouse now through February 9th at Having Our Say, the Delaney sisters' first 100 years. You can uh, get more information and purchase tickets by going to omahaplayhouse.com. Lynette and Camille, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Having us. <laughs> and for events calendar, I'm Michael Lyon.